Hello and welcome again to my physical science lab video series. In today's video I wanted to talk about how to do the reaction time lab. Uh, the equipment that you're going to need for this lab is probably the most straightforward of any lab you're going to do. You need your left hand, you need your right hand, you need a meter stick, which is this guy, and it you need a lab partner of some sort. Um, for the demo purpose, I'm going to do without the lab partner, but you're going to want one to really make good measurements of your reaction time. Um, what you're going to do is, this is the meter stick, and your lab partner will hold the meter stick, and they'll hold it above your hand. So here. Here it's touching the top of my finger. Hold it right above the hand. My hand is open, ready to catch this if I were to drop it. And basically what you do is your lab partner drops it, you try to catch it, and then you look and measure what uh, number did you catch it on. So this right here, I've caught it just below the 18 mark. Actually, if I look closely here, it's about 17.6 centimeters. So you'd write down that the meter stick fell 17.6 centimeters. I'm actually going to go ahead and write that on a little board here. 17.6 centimeters. That actually can be written as point one seven six meters. Um, so I'm going to put that out of my way for a sec. <clears throat> we'll come back to that in just a moment. I want to go over how I came to that 0.176 measurement. Um, so here's the meter stick. There's two sides to it. One side shows basically inches. Um, so this is the inches side. Uh, it goes out to about 39 inches, a little over in fact. Uh, this side is the meter six side. These numbers that are shown on it are in um, centimeters. So this number 10 represents 10 centimeters, 11 centimeters, 12 centimeters, 13 centimeters. And you can see that in addition to the numbers, there's also these smaller, finer tick marks that are unnumbered. There's 10 of those tick marks per centimeter, so those tick marks are actually one millimeter per tick. So I caught it on the 17 mark, and actually my finger was, you know, from this angle on the camera, looks like it's just below 18, but if you look at it properly, you actually will see that it's right on the 17.6 mark. So that's how you've got to make the measurement. So that's 17.6 centimeters. And you're going to want to convert that into meters for this lab. And if you forget how to convert from centimeters to meters, the, the root centi, of course, means that there's a hundred of them. Hence, there's a hundred cents in a dollar. Um, 100 per cent is a whole. Um, and for centimeters to meters, it starts from the zero mark, and as you go from zero, you get up to a maximum of, you can see that this number right here says 90. So 99, and then 100 is at the very bottom of the stick. So there's 100 centimeters in a meter. That means that if you measure 17 centimeters, that's 0.17 meters. And since I measured 17.6, that's 0.176 centimeters. OK, so what you're going to do is you'll do that one time for your left hand. This is my left hand one time for your right hand. So, you know, you can drop it for the right hand. Um, 
maybe your right hand is faster, maybe your left hand is faster, I don't know. Um, if I drop it for my right hand, I seem to have caught it at about the 12 and a half centimeter mark. So that would seem to indicate that my right hand's a little faster. Um, I'm right hand dominant. Um, so that gets you a distance that the stick has fallen, and you want to get a reaction time from that. So the way that you do that is I'm going to have to bring up the little board again. It's not the most fancy high tech way of doing this, but here's my board. Um, you will learn in the kinematics lecture that for an object falling under a constant acceleration, the distance that the object falls, x, is one half times the acceleration times the time it falls for squared, plus you know some additional terms, initial speed times time. And there's also an initial position, but we started it so that the very bottom of the stick was right where my hand was. So that means that this guy is zero. We dropped it from rest, so this guy's zero. And so we're left with just the acceleration and the position. We're wanting to know how much time it took to fall. So we've got to solve this equation here for time. So um, multiply both sides by two. So that's 2x equals a t squared. Divide both sides by a. So 2x over a is equal to t squared. And now take a square root of both sides. And you've got the time. So x is the distance that it's fallen. In this case, x is equal to 0 0.176 meters. A is the acceleration it falls with. As long as you're doing this on the surface of the earth, it's going to be universally 9.8 meters per second squared. So 2 times 0.176 divided by 9.8 meters per second squared is going to give you the time squared. So let me do that very quickly. And that comes out to 0 0.035 uh, seconds squared. So now we take a square root of that. And what you end up getting is that the reaction time is 0 0.1895. So we'll call that 0.190. So that is my reaction time in seconds. Okay, so that's how you get your reaction time. The second part of this lab is that you want to do this a few times. Um, so there's this nifty table that you've got to fill out. Um, if the if you want to read it, it's basically just saying that the dominant hand versus the non-dominant hand is going to have a fall distance in meters versus reaction time in seconds. And there's 10 columns to fill out. And then once you've repeated this 10 times, you're actually going to take an average. and um, the order of operations here is kind of important. There's two ways that you can do this average. One is, uh, let's say you want to get an average reaction time. So one way would be to measure the distance each time, then take the average of the distances, and then convert that to a time using the equation that I have put here on this board. The other way is to convert each distance into a time and then find the average of those times after. And it turns out that you should do it that second way. Convert distance to time, then find the average of the times. Okay, um, And that gives you an average reaction time for both hands. Then 
the additional step in this lab is to find an uncertainty. And the way that you're going to get an uncertainty is that you're going to calculate what's called a standard deviation. Um, so to get a standard deviation, you have to know something about actual deviations. So let's do a quick example with deviations, first of all. Let's say that you do all this work, you come out with an average uh, time, which I'm going to represent T sub A, of 0 0.200 seconds, like so. Okay, now let's say that you want to know what is the deviation that this time 0 0.190 seconds has from your average. So your deviation for this time, we'll call this time number one because it's the first time that I did it. Deviation we can represent with a D sub 1. It's going to be time 1 minus time average. And so that's going to be 0 0.2 seconds minus 0 0.19 seconds. And so your deviation for that first one is going to be 0 0.010 seconds. Okay, so that is the deviation. The standard deviation says take the deviations that you get, and you're going to do 10 trials, so take your 10 deviations, square all 10 of them, you know, square each one of them, that is, add those squares together, so you're adding 10 numbers together, now divide by 10. Now take a square root of that number that you've divided, and that is what's called the standard deviation. And that is what you'll use for your uncertainty. So once you get that, your standard deviation, let's say that you get uh, S is equal to 0 0.01 seconds for the sake of argument, you can then create a result and the result is going to be average minus standard deviation up to average plus standard deviation. So your result is going to be 0 0.200 seconds plus or minus 0 0.010 seconds. And that's equivalent to saying that your reaction time for this hand falls somewhere within your limits of uncertainty, somewhere in the range of 0 0.19 seconds up to 0 0.21 seconds. So you're going to do that. You're going to do it for both your dominant and your non-dominant hand. And that's the end of the lab. Uh, basically, what the point of this lab is, is to show the limits of, of certainty and uncertainty in your measurements. Basically, to show that when you measure something, even something simple like a reaction time, you can't just declare off of one measurement that that's what this thing is, that that's what this thing is always equal to that there is some variation in that measurement. And for what it's worth, this applies not just to reaction times, but to any kind of measurement you want to make. If I were to measure the length of the wall behind me and have 10 other people do it using just this meter stick, we may actually come up with 10 slightly different answers. So thanks for watching, and I hope that this has been a helpful video.